Welcome to another video on the Football Manager's YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be providing a guide on how to create an effective mentoring group and explaining the different ways a player's determination attribute can be affected, both positively and negatively. I will also be explaining how you can increase a player's work rate attribute. In each mentoring group you will have players with varying levels of influence. For the purposes of this video, the player with the most influence in a group will be referred to as the mentor and the players with the least influence will be referred to as the mentees. Now there are a few things to consider before you create a mentoring group and they are listed on the screen. With the first factor in mind, you should always make sure that the mentor in your group has the highest determination attribute out of all the players in the group. Your mentor should also have a good or desirable personality type as their personality could have an impact on the mentee's personality. Knowing that mentees may inherit their mentor's player traits, it would only make sense to create groups with players who play in a similar position or have a similar style of play. As mentoring groups with the same players become less effective over time, my advice is to break up groups after roughly four to six months and create new groups with different players instead. Here we have three mentoring groups that I created at the start of the season, the centre-backs group, the full-backs group and the wingers group. For this example, I'll only be focusing on the centre-backs group which will be led by Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva has a resolute personality and 15 for his determination attribute. The two mentees in the group, Marco Kana, and Loic Mbeso have balanced personalities and their determination attributes are 13 and 12 respectively. This mentoring group achieved its purpose as both Kana and So experienced improvements. In August, Kana's determination increased to 14 and his personality evolved from balanced to fairly ambitious. In the following month, Kana's determination rose again and this time, his personality evolved to fairly determined. In the same month, So's determination went up by 1.2 but his personality remained the same. As there weren't any changes during the months of October, November and December, I will now fast forward to the start of January and review the results. Over the course of six months, Kana's determination went up by two points and his personality had evolved whereas Soz's determination experienced an increase of one point. Unfortunately for us, both the full-backs group and the wingers group yielded no results. The only explanation I can come up for this is that, for the full-backs group, both Juan Bernat and Thomas Munier had the same level of influence within the group which meant that there were two mentors in the group. The only mentee in this group, Kony de Winter, may have found it difficult to shadow two different mentors at the same time hence why the group did not yield any results. As for the wingers group, I will put this down to the fact that the mentor, Kylian Mbappe, is only 20 years old and although he is by far the most influential player in the group, he is still too young to be a mentor. I will now create a new set of groups for the second half of the season. In the new centre-backs group I got Marquinhos to replace Thiago Silva as the mentor for Kana and So. Just like Silva, Marquinhos has a resolute personality but his determination attribute is two points higher at 17. Thiago Silva has been assigned to the defenders group where he is the leading mentor ahead of Munier and De Winter. For the forwards group, Edinson Cavani and Maymar will act as mentors for youngsters Francisco Concisao and Louis Barry but Cavani will have more influence in the group due to his position in the squad hierarchy. Both Cavani and Maymar have 16 for their determination attribute and their personality types are perfect for mentors. They also have numerous player traits which could be transferred over to the mentees. After five full months, there were some good results from all three mentoring groups and they are as follows. Kana's determination improved by one point back in February. De Winter's determination also increased by one point during the same month. Concisao inherited the likes to beat men repeatedly trait from Maymar in April and Louis Barry's personality evolved from fairly determined to ambitious. So was the only player to not gain anything from being in a mentoring group this time round. Seeing that Kana's determination attribute grew by three points over the course of one season just from being placed in mentoring groups with great mentors, it is definitely worth investing some time and effort in setting up the right mentoring groups for your players as it could go a long way in their development. There are five ways a player's determination can be affected. Number one, mentoring groups. I already explained this in detail so we will move on to the second way which is the welcoming period and new signing experiences when he first joins a new club. 
When a new signing joins your club you get the option as the manager to instruct one of your senior players to welcome the new signing. The player you use to welcome your new signing can have an impact on the new signing and I will explain this further later on. The third way a player's determination can be affected is the general character of your squad which also affects new signings if they are joining a squad with a different sort of character. The fourth way is when you fine a player for a poor performance. The effects of fining a player vary from an increase in determination, work rate and in some cases, both. The final way a player's determination can be affected is from an off-field incident. This is completely random and will only happen to new gens. It could result in a massive spike in their determination or a massive drop and their personality could also change. Here we have Vinicius Jr. who I just signed from Real Madrid. He has a driven personality and his determination attribute is 18 which is very good. I instructed Maymar, who is one of Vinicius's idols, to welcome him to the club. Although Maymar has a perfectionist personality, his determination attribute is only 16. As a manager, this is a bad move as you should always get a senior player whose determination attribute is higher than the new signing to welcome them to the club. In early April, it was brought to my attention by one of the coaches that our squad's general character has had a positive effect on Vinicius. As we can see here, this is completely false. Vinicius's determination has fell by one point and his personality has also taken a backward step as he is now only fairly determined. A few days later his determination fell again and he has adopted a perfectionist personality, the same as Maymar's. In this example, we witnessed the negative effects your squad's general character could have on a new signing and we also learned the importance of getting the right personnel to welcome a new signing. To create a good welcoming period for a new signing there are three factors you need to consider and they all relate to selecting the player you use to welcome a new signing their personality, determination and whether or not they speak the same language as the new signing. In this example I will be using Daniele Regani who's just joined from Juventus. Regani's determination is only 11 but he has a professional personality. I identified Cavani as the perfect man to welcome Regani to the club as he has the same personality as Regani plus his determination is way higher at 16. Cavani is also fluent in Italian as he'd spent many years playing in Italy so it was no surprise to see that Regani's determination had gone up by one point a few months later. In some cases, a good welcoming period may result in both players becoming each other's favoured personnel, which was the case here as Cavani now considers Regani one of his favoured personnel. As mentioned earlier, finding a player for playing poorly could have an effect on their determination or work rate but for this to happen, a player must first accept the fact that they deserved their fine. If a player gets pissed from receiving a fine it will not have any impact on their attributes. In this example I will be fining Mbappe one week's wages after a poor performance. As Mbappe accepted the fine and admitted that he deserved it, we can see that his determination has gone up by one point from 14 to 15 as a result of the fine. In my next example I will be fining Barry a day's wages. Just like Mbappe, Barry accepts his fine but this situation is different in the sense that it was Barry's work rate that increased, not his determination. A few months later Barry played poorly once again but this time, I decided to fine him half a week's wages. The big difference this time round is that both his determination and work rate increased by one point because of this fine. Based on what we just saw in the last example with Barry, I would recommend adopting a progressive fining system where you fine your player one day's wages for his first bad performance, half a week's wages for his second bad performance and so on to maximize the effects of this. In most cases, players will become unhappy when they receive a fine but it is worth noting that if you give them a good reason as to why you find them, they may take that criticism on board and this too may lead to an increase in their determination or work rate. Please note that you should not expect a player's determination or work rate to increase just because you find them as not all players will react to this, even if they accept their fine. Younger players are more likely to react to getting fined which is why I would recommend monitoring your reserves and under-19 games so that you can find players who performed poorly. Off-field incidents can affect your player's determination or personality dramatically in a positive or negative way. These events can only occur to new gens and are completely random. You will be notified about these events in an email from one of your backroom staff members. It is a realistic replication of how players in real life could turn their career around or go off the rails due to off-field events. Thank you for watching this video.
If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button down below and share it around. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager content.